Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody between on the pixelated approximation of some guy, and I'm carrying on with the overanalysis of the Blackwell legacy. Let's move on to part three, and actually get into the heart of the game. No more plot dumps, folks. We just straight up pointed and clicking now. That was strange. Everybody just ignored you. Am I the only one who can see you? Well, that's just kind of a silly question now, isn't it? It's already been established that her aunt had the same ghost and nobody saw him when he was in the hospital with her for 20 years. Yep, and hear me. So keep your voice low. Otherwise, we'll sound like a babbling schizophrenic in New York City. Oh, yeah. This is the spot. Can you see it? I don't see anything. Can we go? Come on, this way. Hey, wait! Yes, let's just go ahead and blindly trust the specter who has brought us to the park in the dead of night. Absolutely nothing could go wrong here, right? Don't worry, I can't travel far from you. It goes against the rules, whatever they are. Well, that's just reassuring, Joey. But anyway, after a milling about for a little bit, we get our money shot. Wait, I see something. Who is that? That's what we're here to find out. I'll talk to the spook. You can stay here. Okay. Now watch and learn. Why so down, beautiful? Joey, 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 come on, man. It sounds like you're trying to hit on the girl, not help her. I want you to listen to me, girly. Your tears won't win any sympathy from me. So tell me what the story is so we can both get out of here. I hope Rosa is taking notes because this seems to be working out so well for us right now. Hey, I'm talking to you. They all run. It's so hard to hold on. It's me. It's me, they won't stop. Well, that's just all kinds of spooky. We're here to help you. Help? Yeah, that's us. We're helpers. Help. Help. He wants me to help him. But I want to help them. Don't they know that? Help who? Can't, can't. They run away. We won't run away. No. No, we're sick. He poisoned us. Got into our head and poisoned us. Whatever happened, darling, it's over. You do know that, don't you? No. I'm poisoned. Stay away or I'll poison you! Run! Run away like all the others. Not a chance. I'm staying right here. You're... You're him. He's the only one who won't go away! Who? Him! Now look, darling, sweetheart. Leave me. Hey. Leave! All right. We're going. Well, good for Joey. He seems to understand boundaries. What just happened? What just happened is we've got an unstable spirit on our hands. Haunting that dog park over there. You wondered why the mutts don't like it here? That's the reason. There's a ghost haunting the dog park. That's what I said. You know what? Have you got a haunt somewhere? Why not make it a dog park? It does sound like a much more nicer and vibrant place than one of those spooky mansions all the ghosts seem to like to hang out in. But nevertheless, our protagonist has had enough of today, and she's just going straight to bed. I can't say I blame her. I mean, there's really no reason why we can't investigate this thing in the morning when, you know, everyone's awake. Uh. What an odd dream. Good morning, Bright Eyes. Uh, you're still here. Wouldn't be anywhere else. Has anybody told you that you snore? Always comforting to know that someone's paying attention to you while you sleep. So this is going to be my life from now on? Pretty much, yeah. You're going to follow me around for the rest of my life. That's how it works, as far as I can tell. Great. Just great. You gotta wonder what effect this is going to have on this poor lady's love life. I mean, Joey's going to be there if she ever brings a gentleman home. Or a lady, I don't know her preferences. But yeah, it's going to be awkward, isn't it? You think I chose to be shackled to your family for the last 40 years? Your grandmother refused to accept it, and look what happened to her. And auntie? She made a mistake. What kind of mistake? Hey, what is this, 20 questions? What's with the third degree? Joey, come on, it sounds kind of important. The aunt made a mistake, which caused her to be in a coma-like state for 20 years. You think that maybe Joey would be like, oh, hey, this is what happened. Unless, maybe it involves us in some way. 
But even then, come on, Joey. This sounds like important, pertinent information you really ought to tell us so you know we can avoid the same fate. Just saying, Joey, just saying. You've only seen a taste of it. Are you ready to go all the way? What do you mean? Ready to see what's out there. Ready to see what this is all about. Oh God, please keep your pants on, Joey. So what is it? I don't have to tell you. It's best if I show you. No, Joey, what did I tell you? Keep your clothes on, please. Oh, never mind. It's something plot important. Here, take a hold of this. I can touch it? Yeah, the only part of me you can touch, unfortunately. Oh, you dirty dog, Joey. But then again, it's been 40 years, so I feel you. It kind of tingles. What is it? The stuff of life. Or death. I've never quite worked it out. What now? Now you pull. Pull the tie? Yeah, pull. Okay. Oh my god, where have you taken me? Relax, take your time. It's a lot to take in at once. All right, we got some space and what appears to be a white light in the background. We got some stone floor here and a portal. Okay, I've taken it all in, Joey. What is this place? It's the doorway to infinity, darling. Out there, in the distance, the next world, the next plane of existence, the gossamer threads that separate this world from the next. A gossip thread? Let me Google this. Huh, it's a Vancouver-based technology. Oh, it's also a fancy word for fine spider silk. And also, it's a very light sheer gauze-like fabric. Ooh, so many fancy words. Whatever you want to call it, it's all out there. How did we get here? We're inside your head. You mean I'm dreaming? No, I mean we're literally inside your head. Remember those headaches you had yesterday? Yeah. That was some masons coming in and laying down the stonework inside your brain. That was your power awakening. Or to be more specific, it was this place. Forcing its way into your mind. So that's just a lovely thing to find out that's happening inside your brain. So anyway, we push Joey on some questions and basically he fills out the lore of this lovely new brainscape we got going on. So what does this place actually do? It's sort of a transfer point or node. It connects the mortal world with the next. You bring spirits into this place, and then send them on their merry way. That's it. Well, there's a bit more to it than that. No, that's pretty much more or less it. This is like a little way station to transfer ghosts from the real world to the other world. And that's really all we need to know, folks. We do this by making ghosts tug on a tie, so they get in our brain, and then we throw them into a white light. Yeah, I think I can see why people thought our aunt was crazy. All right, let's get out of here. You know what? The music's got some nice bass. Sorry, just thought I should comment on that. Good music. Welcome back. Ugh. Take it easy. It's a little disorientating. I'm fine. So what now? Go back to the park and bring her to... that place? You got it. And how do we do that? There are three steps. First, we have to find out more about her. Second, we use that information to get through to her, convince her that she's dead. And three, help her move on. Well, wow, that's pretty much the setup for the rest of the game. We now know what we gotta do. We gotta check into this girl that's haunting the dog park. Then we gotta tell her, yo, you're dead. And then we just throw her into our brain. Fantastic and pretty straightforward. But before we can get cracking on the investigation into the dead girl in the dog park, we gotta ask Joey a very, very important question. And I'm serious, if we don't ask him this question, we cannot solve a puzzle. Well, thank God we triggered that crucial event. Now, sure, you can get more into the lore of this game by talking to Joey, but frankly, we're not interested in that. Because, well, I just would leave it up here unedited, and you should play the game yourself if you want to get more familiar with the lore of it. But to say the least, it's really not that bad. Although, more of it opens up the further you get into this game because of course Joey's just not going to plot dump everything on you although that's kind of a bit disingenuous considering everyone else plot dumped on us but hey whatever if you want to get more into the lore you can but it's not essential to the game I think I've heard enough yeah let's get going and that's what we'll do we'll finally get to cracking on this investigation of the ghost park girl or park ghost girl whatever let's go back to the dorms and talk to some people Yo, it's open. After you. Yeah? Well, what a nice dorm room. Too bad there's only two things we need in this whole area, and then we never need to see it again. 
The first important item being some photos that are on a board. The future Mrs. Davenport? I wonder what that means. I recognize her. That's Joanne. That's her, the ghost in the park. She looks so happy here. I wonder what happened to make her like that. Ooh, how intriguing. Now naturally, you have to ask Kelly about these people to open up more dialogue options about, well, these people. And now let's go for the second item. Can I? No. Joanne and I might not have been buddies, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna let some stranger paw through her stuff. Really? Now all of a sudden you got some moral outrage about us taking her stuff? You gave us a photo of her that was on her damn desk and you didn't seem to mind then. Hell, you don't even seem to care about Joanne at all. But no, all of a sudden now Kelly's gotta be a roadblock in our way to progress. So we have to do something kind of adventure gamey in order to solve this puzzle. And that's use the phone to talk to Joey. Hello, could I speak to Joey please? Hi, Joey? Um... Yes, I had some questions for you. Ah! <laughs> not bad, kid, not bad. If you got something to say, say it quick. Lady Pincushion here is starting to look a little hot under the collar. And this is why it's absolutely important that you get Joey to show you that he can blow on things. Otherwise, you won't know that he can blow on things, like the papers that are over on that desk, so we can steal this notebook. Uh... Sure, sure, I can handle that. Thanks again, Kelly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if I were you, Kelly, I'd just ask a crazy lady to leave. Nice one. So now we can jet out of here and read through Joanne's personal effects. Of course, we have to talk to Kelly about everything. But yeah, I'm not going to show you that. It just opens up more clues as you can ask people. So, congratulations, kid. You committed your first burglary. Is that what I just did? Uh, I would say that's more like petty theft. For the greater good, kid. For the greater good. That makes me feel so much better. Looks like standard poli sci lecture notes. It looks like Joanne liked to doodle in class. The last set of notes in this notebook are pretty... strange. I'd better take a closer look. Oh, yeah, we actually have to click on them in our inventory. So it's pretty apparent that Joanne was going crazy and that her friends had friends. And of course, we're going to use this to our advantage at some point. But first, let's do some clue blending to make a distinct and new clue. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that these refer to the same person. So Alexander Davenport is the boyfriend of one of the girls, who was friends with Joanne who committed suicide by jumping off a building, and friends with the dead ghost girl in the park. So yeah, he may be an important dude. Hopefully he's just not a name. So while we're still here, we might as well go ahead and ask everybody about everything, because that's how you get more clues in this game. You can't really infer things from the papers you get, although sometimes it's a bit obvious. Like, how the hell do you figure out who these girls are in a photo? Why you ask Kelly about it? Even though, in the notebook, it has their names written down. And you can probably at least guess based upon, well, the fact that we have their names. But hey, whatever, we ask everybody about everything, and then we go back to the ghost girl, and guess what? We start asking her questions about everything we just learned. Can you tell me about your friend Susan? Quiet Sue. Little Lady Lee. Always neat and always fair. Won't say much, but you'll know she's there. Lady... Lee? She had to go away. Stupid deacon. Sending away all my friends. Even the little, little ones. Right, you see, it's important that we go through every question with this ghost lady because that's the only way we're going to get the last names of her friends. So then we can Google them and then we can find out some really important information about one of them and open up a new area that we need to go to. Hope you got all that. No, I'm serious. We use the Google machine to find out more information about the girls. And if you're wondering who the deacon is, he's like something we'll find out about later. Right now, he's just a spooky specter that exists in the spooky realm of spookiness. And he'd probably kill these girls. She apparently spent some time on a spiritual internet forum. She was looking for information about Ouija boards? Are Ouija boards dangerous? She asked. Can they call anything evil? And if so, how do you get rid of it? Oh, jeez. Another bunch of hacks messing with those stupid boards. This has happened before? A few times. Those things are nothing but trouble. Hmm. I wonder if I can possibly figure out what may have happened to these girls. But anyway, we still have to Google some more names. Until suddenly... Susan Lee, 18 years old, was admitted to Bellevue Hospital last week after an apparent suicide attempt. I think that's our girl. 
So convenience is stacked upon convenience as the same hospital that had our aunt for 20 years also has this girl that we need to talk to admitted in it. So let's just jazzercise our way over there. Why the hell did I say jazzercise? Man, I hate this place. I was stuck here for 25 years. Why'd you have to drag me back here, huh? Uh, well, we really have nowhere else to go, man. Is Susan Lee a patient here? Susan? Yeah, we've got her. She came in about a week ago. Well, that's awesome that this security guard is so forthcoming with information. So anyway, we asked to see her, and the guy's like, Oh, are you on the approved guest list? Which means we're going to lie about our name. Because obviously our name's on the guest list. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first, we have to figure out something. And it's probably one of the most frustrating aspects of this game, at least for me. You see, what you gotta do here is you gotta click on the name Adrian and then click on the name Alexander or vice versa in your notebook to realize that Alex could be considered a girl's name because the same happened to Adrian. Yeah, because someone thought Adrian was a girl's name, you realize that you can call yourself Alex, which makes me think that Adrian only exists so you can solve this puzzle. So that whole thing of the dude on the girl's dorm, that all was just for this puzzle. (sighs) And yeah, the only way I discovered this solution was by rubbing every clue up against every other clue, because I'm not entirely sure if I could have intuitively figured this one out. But then again, I could just be a big old dummy. But anyway, we can now see Susan by lying about our name. No other credentials needed, even though he's seen our credentials before. Oh my god, let's just roll with it, folks. We've seen Susan. Alexander? Um, no. I'm sorry. Well, unless Alex really made a change while you were in the hospital, uh, what kind of a lady. But anyway, you gotta convince this girl that you're on the up and up. And as you can imagine, some clue blending's involved to get the right question to ask Susan. And yeah, I'm sorry that it's all chopped up like this, but frankly, I could never really get into a good sync with this game. All this clue blending, I just always forgot I had a blend a clue here, blend a clue there. It's just something I struggled with. I just never really got into a rhythm with this game, so... You have to mix a deacon with the Ouija board to open up a new conversation item that's Susan exclusive. Susan, can you listen to me? You're not crazy. I know what happened. You summoned the deacon with the Ouija board. No, that didn't really happen. Susan, you don't have to pretend. I believe you. You do? Whatever happened, I believe you. He still comes to me. The drugs keep him away during the day. But when I sleep, he enters my head and he won't stop screaming. I thought I was crazy, but Joanne and Allie, how could it happen to all three of us? It's impossible. No, it's not. No, it's not. The deacon is real? I believe so, yes. Are you here to help me? I'm going to try. Thank God. I was ready to die here, but... I know. Can I ask you some questions about what happened? Sure. Ask whatever you want. Well, aren't we just a big old sweetheart? So naturally, we're going to ask her about everything in order to really fill out the plot of this game now. So what happened to you, Susan? What did the deacon do to you? The same thing he did to the others. Got into my head and just wouldn't keep quiet. It was just so noisy inside my head. I had to do something. I saw the speeding taxi... And I just... Well, you know, here I am. Were you hurt? No. The driver hit the brakes in time. Taxi missed me completely. Then the stupid cop on the corner dragged me here. I can't even kill myself right. So yeah, that's pretty damn crazy. The ghost that's haunting these girls will not shut up, and he's driving them to suicide. Well, I guess in light of that, Joey seems like a practical darling now. But anyway, we find out some really crucial information that's going to help us crack this case wide open. Look, Joey, it's starting to get dark. Yeah, I can see that. Was it the darkness that gave it away? I'm just saying. That's right, folks. By talking to her about everything, the time begins to change. That means we're approaching the climax of this game and the final episode of it. Hopefully you'll stick around and see it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, have a good day.